today we're going to be talking about uh, uh, working with um, being objects for for interactivity, and uh, this will be the first public showcase of Monobrains. <laughs> Yay! It's exciting. Yay. I've been, gosh, heads down the last two months, <clears throat> trying to squeeze out the bugs this week, and get ready for uh, Hackathon next week. But um, hopefully be sharing these with some of you who are interested. I'm curious, you know, in this group, like who here are, is part of the uh, Build-A-Thon? Like, are you all signed up for the Build-A-Thon? Um, and what y'all working on? Like, uh, drop it in the chat. I'm, I'm pretty interested. Maybe if it's just a description or if it's a screenshot or something, that'd be awesome. I'm also curious um, if you're, <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. If you're um, uh, interested in interactivity, that's what we're really going to talk about today. Um, a little bit about thinking about interactivity and designing your assets, but mostly just going through some of the um, feature set in Mona Brains right now. And I'm building out a level right now, so I'm adding some functionality. And so this will very much be a working session and just... Um, uh, hopefully we don't have too many bugs blocking us, but um, but yeah, that's that's what we're about. Um, Alejandro, do you want to share what Mona Brains is about? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Mona Brains is sort of uh, something that I had been thinking about for quite a while. Um, my background is uh, I worked on two uh, products uh, that were um, child-focused um, virtual building tools that had, uh, that had visual scripting languages uh, for bringing things to life. Um, so I helped design uh, those and, uh, or, and build, build them out. And uh, basically Mona Brains came from my ideas of like how to make that better and then after seeing Mona, how to uh, work with the power that Mona gives users in, to make something even more robust. Um, and so this is this is a design that I put forward of like how to make games fast, quick, and easy, where you with minimal code or even no code. Um, it's basically a way of if you create, say, something that behaves like a dog, you could apply it to a couch, you could apply it to a lamppost, and those would just kind of come to life as dogs. If you wanted a uh, the uh, like a fire-breathing dog, then you would add another brain. So you'd add a dog brain, and then you'd add a fire-breathing brain, and now you have a, a fire-breathing dog. So you could either script that brain yourself with our script, simple scripting tools, or you could get those from somebody else who made them online um, uh, and and uh, uh, put them on your own objects and, and bring them to life. Yeah, so, so for those of you who have been um, writing with uh, Mona for a while, you know, you're familiar with the Mona Reactor tool set. Um, this uh, is a set of features that's similar to Mona Reactor. You're going to see a lot of the same things, like being able to uh, trigger things if you enter a trigger or exit a trigger, or um, if you interact with something, being able to um, trigger animations. What we're adding is the ability to track variables, um, as well as perform uh, many different uh, actions. And so um, hopefully what we're taking is, you know, what you're familiar with, with Mona Reactor as far as functionality and expanding it. So uh, to start with, I um, got a little wild cool. with uh, Alejandro's uh, uh, asset pack last night. Um, so this is the uh, dungeon pack that Alejandro put together. It's a series of, oh, let me, uh, uh, modular pieces. So this, for instance, is five by five tile. I've also, within Unity, 
um, turned on grid snapping. Um, and so what that allows me to do is move by a specific, or half a meter units. And so it makes alignment much easier. And so here are some different pieces, pieces of fencing, uh, different types of blocks. We got um, a chalice I made into a fountain. Um, I took these uh, clay pots right here. <laughs> That's and, fun. And All made right. them into little punching bag things. Um, okay, okay. I like that. <laughs> I dropped in some... Nice, nice. Uh, uh, dropped in some coins mm -hmm. right here. Mona coins, ooh, that's cool. Mona uh, coins, yeah. <laughs> Got to put them in. Yep. And then um, I also made this, like, uh, temple that you have to kind of go into. And so I got, okay. um, you know, some door pieces here. The goal is to be able to, like, open the door. Um, I'm in just a space starter, uh, our, our new space starter um, project. And so this will be something that I'll be making available to people interested in brains. Um, and let's see here. Um, all right. So we will save what's in the temple for a little bit later here. So, um, so the, one of the first things I did was I wanted to make, um, the ability for these coins to spin and bounce. Uh, and so, uh, right now, uh, this, of course, is a constantly moving target. We'll be looking at improving the UI, very much a work in progress. Uh, but right now, we've introduced this idea of a monobody. And a monobody is something that allows you to synchronize objects over the network. And so, if you want an object um, to move the same way in all scenes, then you add a monobody to it. Uh, and you set it to network the transform. And so the transform is this right here. It's the position, rotation, and scale. And so this uh, synchronizes the transform across the network so that if you move it on your client, uh, then it will move on everybody's clients that's connected to the same space. And then on top of a monobody, we have this thing called monobrains. And so monobrains has a monobrain runner and then you can assign one or more brains to um, a runner. And a brain is a, um, a scriptable object. Uh, and all that really means is that it's an asset in your library in Unity. Um, and so in this case, I have a floating coin one. And um, what we've tried to do with Mona Brains is make it something that um, is easy to read. Um, and yet it's flexible enough to be able to offer you quite a few options. So uh, in this case, what we're doing is when uh, a brain starts, we're going to move it up half a meter and then move it down half a meter. And it's going to do this in sequence. So it will take one second to move it up. And then after that's done, it will take one second to move it down. And then at the same time that it's moving up and down, it's going to be spinning in a semicircle. And so um, it is doing that over one second. So when it moves up, it should spin right uh, half a uh, semicircle. When it moves down, it should spin again. And then uh, what we want to do is that when a player enters the trigger here, like when it gets close to the coin, uh, then we want to tabulate how many coins have been collected um, and hide the coin. Um, I just realized a, uh, a flaw in my logic here because I'm counting coins on the coin itself. So I need to change it so it counts yeah. coins on the player. <laughs> so we'll fix that. <laughs> um, but well, let me, may, oh, may I go, jump in here for just Go a for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, you can hit play and, and we can see the coin go up and down, but uh, yeah, I'd like to, uh, so there you go. Mm -hmm. Now we have like a little floating collectible, which is fantastic. Um, really easy to set up. I'm going to go higher. So how these, how these uh, instructions okay. are uh, set are, we, we are they're arranged in what we call sentences and so a sentence 
without, uh, with just instructions, which we call action tiles, the green uh, tiles here. Uh, we'll just run all the instructions, get to the end, and repeat. If it has a conditional at the front, which is one of the blue tiles oh, here, mm -hmm. then it will only execute when that condition is true. So when you enter, uh, uh, then that when the player enters, then ex execute this function hide. Once it's hidden, the player can't enter it anymore, and so that is that will complete. Um, so you can have as many instructions as you want; <clears throat> they run in parallel. However, we also have uh, things called uh, state pages. So this is a core page. So this is always uh, running, and we can go into state pages later. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I just want to to go over just how how things are executed. Sure. Yeah, the core page is a thing that's executed by default. Um, and so say I want to, I don't like that it's turning left. Um, perhaps I want to turn right now it's, or I'm sorry, it's spinning right. Let's have it spin left. So if I click on this, I can, I have a little menu here and I can replace it with um, let's see, spin right, so now I'm going to spin uh, left. And so it swaps out the tile. We call these instruction tiles. Um, it swaps out the tile, and now it's spinning left. And I can make it spin uh, a little bit faster. So I'll do this. Press play. And now it's spinning faster. OK, but say I want it um, not to be so predictable in its movement, we can do something like, I'm going to select this instruction. Scroll down here. This will be a searchable interface, but we'll say uh, move yeah, up, this interface is, move is, down. Is not the final. It will be a far, far more graphical in nature once yeah, it's done. Yeah, more icons and stuff. It will also be available. Yeah. It'll also be available uh, like in, in the game window as well. Mm. Eventually, yep. So you see it goes up, yeah. down, and then it goes up two and down two. Up one, two, and down two. And so what's uh, cool about this is that you can apply uh, simultaneous movement. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to also move left and right, then move up and down, and then let's move left and right. And let's see, that is going to, yeah, one second. So I've just added another, let's see what happens now. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Let's. Let me delete that. That shouldn't be happening. It's probably because I'm rotating the object itself. And it's spinning. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. So now it's kind of like a side to side motion. <laughs> yeah. If I make this a little bit longer, now we get a uh, kind of an arc. Kind of cool. All right, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to. If anybody has any questions, don't or feel free to pop in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna go back to rotating it. So let's rotate. Um, let's see if like the uh, do the spin right again. And maybe. Easing is, um, if you're familiar with like animation curves, um, it's a way to ease the movement. So it like starts really slow, speeds up, and then ends really slow. And so it adds like a smoothing to your motion, which is uh, much more appealing. So um, to see the difference there, 
Uh, I'm just going to do none. And if I were to switch this between different types of easing, if I change this to easing out, you see how the animation stops halfway through because it's slowing down again. So easing is a way to change um, yeah, the speed of your animation. All right. So let's see here. Um, let's get these coins. Let's get these coins collected. Coins back to where they were. Back yeah. to where they were. All right. Delete that. Yeah. Delete let's that. that. Right there. Okay. <clears throat> um. Okay. So something else that we can do is um, track variables. So um, when a player enters, I want to message the player. I want to I want to send a message to the player that they've collected a coin. Uh, and so to do that, I want to send a message to a tag. All right, thanks, Pixel. Thanks for joining. Uh, looking forward to catching up. Um, so I want to send a collect coin message. And I want to send it to the player. And I'm going to delete this. All right. So when a player gets close to the coin, uh, we're going to message the player that they collected the coin. And then we're going to hide the coin. So let's see here. Um, let's go to the player frame that I'm setting up. And we can ignore these because I'll go over them a little bit later. But if I have a collect coin message, then I'm going to change the value of uh, how many coins that I have. And so um, to track uh, variables, we have this section in a brain uh, where we can um, set up uh, different variables of different types. And this is just to store data. And this data is also synced across the network. Um, so we have numbers, strings, true and false values, or position values. So here we're going to say coins. We're going to default it to one. And then that um, variable will show up in this list. And we're going to change the value um, but we don't want to change it to one every time we collect a coin we want to add. So I'm going to click on this, and instead of set, we're going to add. So now what happens is every time the player that has this brain on it uh, gets a collect coin message, it should increment the coins one. All right, so let's try that. Let's try that out. <clears throat> okay, so I've made this little character controller, kind of cute. It's a little, little box that hops around. Still working out the bugs in the animation, but get the idea. And so when it gets close to a coin, let's see what happens. Up, oh, that coin got collected. That coin got collected. <laughs> Um, Big jump there. That's that going got collected. All right. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I did all this, this in a couple this hours last night. This character. <laughs> this, yeah, that, I yeah, I figured as much. I haven't yeah. seen this when I when I left yesterday. So, all right, that's awesome. Let's see how many. Uh, let's see if the coins have been. Let's see if the coins are going. Yay, coins! Look, I have seven coins. So one of the things I'm working on right now is displaying <laughs> those values on the screen. So yeah. <clears throat> we have a thing that we're working on right now that's called Easy UI, which means that any value that you want, uh, any any variable that you have, you can display on screen very easily by just telling it where on the screen and how you want it to be displayed. Um, so whether that's a health bar over an enemy or 
a coin counter at the top of the screen or like a magic a gauge uh, you know on the side of your screen etc all of those things um, will be possible for you to control uh, and and uh, place on the screen so you won't have to go into the inspector mm. immunity to, to, to make sure you got everything uh, something That's else cool I'm uh, it's awesome to see the cube uh, keep running around it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, <kind> of fun. <laughs> it's very gelatinous yeah it's very, very uh yeah it's funny um so you also know that when you, or also notice that in play mode when you select one of your game objects that has a brain on it we're working on this um this uh brain status and this kind of shows you what's happening so as i press different keys you'll see different parts of the brain triggering and so um we can dig into this uh, little mini character controller here. Uh, so going back to it, uh, let's see. Oh, that's right, that's right here. Okay. So <clears throat> we're exposing uh, player input to y'all. Um, it allows you, it will allow you to create brains that can um, act as like remote control characters for your avatar. And so say for instance, um, you had a remote control car. Um, what you could do is drop the remote control car in and then when you get close to it, turn off your avatar input and turn on this input and then drive that car around. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking a cube and I'm driving the cube around. Um, and to do that, we have this Mona input tile and a Mona input tile checks for all of the same input uh, that we check on a, Mona, on a Mona space. And so you have basic actions like jump and uh, move and sprint and uh, click and um, write like, um, like mouse look and all of those different things. And so what I'm doing here is that I'm tracking when you use the WASD keys, W A S. Uh, WASD or use a left joystick, um, then it will move uh, this character or this object along the forward input. So if you go forward, it's going to move it forward. And if you go back, it's going to move it back. And then what this does is it rotates it around the input. So if you go left, it's going to rotate it left. If you go right, it's going to rotate it right. Um, also, when you activate that input, we're also going to play an animation. And this is a standard animation that Alejandro made. It's kind of like a default set of animations that you can apply to anything. And we're using the old squash and, squash and stretch technique of animation that just makes anything feel like it's come to life. Um, OK. And, also, uh, you'll notice that I had a jump. And so to jump, I just set the keyboard to space. And instead of moving it forward or moving it uh, or rotating it side to side, in this case, I'm applying an upward force to it. Uh, and so that causes it to shoot up into the air and then come back down because it's, it's under gravity. Um, if you're not doing anything, I just want it to play an idle animation. And so, um, and then uh, if it ever collects a coin, well, then we want it to track the amount of coins. And so with brains, what we've tried to do is uh, make it so that brains are something you can read top to bottom, left to right. Um, and uh, again, like we call these sentences or instructions and each of them have tiles. And um, these all run at the same time because they're in the same page. And so what we have is a page of instructions, <laughs> excuse me, or a page of um, sentences. And uh, we um, execute those as the, as the game plays out. So any questions uh, so far? Qu <clears throat> and we do have a question uh, from Christian who asks, uh, how easy is it to drag and drop a random object uh, and have behaviors attached to it? So oh, okay. sure. super easy. Right now, there, there's a there's a couple extra steps um, in Unity. Um, you mm -hmm. have to add a brain runner, uh, Mona body, etc. Um, uh, by the time this is uh, our our beta is released, um, all you will have to do in Unity is.
is uh, just add a brain. Um, and so everything else will be taken care of for you. So right. you'll just, um, you'll have uh, a list of brains that you could potentially put on there. Uh, we'll probably have a, a default set of things that you might find handy and, um, or you can just uh, add a new one and you're, you're good to go. All right, so to let's add a key to the scene and then add a brain to it so that it bounces and spins just like the coin. So awesome. to do that, we drag our coin or our key right here. I wanna make that key a little bit bigger so that it looks awesome. All right. Okay, and so I've added my key. Now I'm going to add a runner to it. And I'm going to synchronize it so that it moves on everybody's screen. And then here, I'm going to select coin, floating coin. And there we go. So that's going to reuse the coin behavior um, from before. And now we have a floating key. If you collect it, won't it just collect a coin as well? It will just collect a coin. So to change that, uh, what we can do is let's go back to that floating coin. And that's that behavior. And let's duplicate it. So Control D, floating key. And now, instead of messaging the player that we've collected the coin, we're going to collect a key. Nice. All right. And so let's make sure we re-add that here. So it's floating key. All right. And now let's create a key um, on our player. Oops. Okay. So one way, one way uh, also you could do this is you could have like a floating collectible brain and then a mm. key brain. Oh, that's true. I can separate collect, it out. A collect coin brain. Mm -hmm. And so uh, anytime you wanted to edit the behavior of, say, the floating bit across everything, then you could just have one brain that you, you would need to edit. And then the collectible mechanic could exist on other brains. So that's, I know some of the power of brains is you can have multiple brains on, on one object, each imparting its own this sort of story of behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it will become really powerful once you start combining brains, for sure. Um, I want to make something where we can only open the door if, uh, if you've collected the key. So I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give Perfect. that. A, I'm gonna give that a shot. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what I've done here is that we have the key, and we've assigned it. And now, when the player gets close to it, oh, is that the floating key? Ooh, got a little saving bug happening here. Let's try that again. Okay. So let's go back. Okay, cool. Collect key. All right. Now I'm going to go back to my <clears throat> vehicle. So collect key, change value. I want to add one. Okay. So now I don't have any keys, but when I collect my key, I want it to increment one. So let's see if that works. Um, you'll also notice that I have a different kind of camera here. I'm using a top-down camera. Um, and this will be something that you can also do with brains, is change your camera and um, use Unity Cinem Cinema Machine Library to be able to um, provide different overhead cameras, side cameras, um, or different room cameras for like entering and exiting different spaces. So it makes it possible to create different types of games. Not everything has to be a first person shooter. Um, we will also allow you to do top down mouse driven games uh, where you enter a space and immediately you can click 
uh, click around to move rather than uh, using traditional uh, movement. So we'll have a, a lot more options when it comes to different types of uh, gameplay. So let's go down here. Okay, uh, well, he's collecting. All right, let's see if I can collect. Is, uh, if you look at... Jump, jump. If you look at his uh, <laughs> cube character. There it is. Here, yes. There's only, there's only uh, you know, three, four lines that govern, like, controlling the movement of this character. Mm -hmm. um, which is, makes putting together something really quick and easy and iterating really fast. You know, like, if you don't like the jump height, you know, go back to the force and, and Love the jump uh, height. change it up, etc. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Uh, go for that. I'm going to check my key. Uh, yeah. I'm going to finish the key thing here. Yeah. So how does the player character move with animation key. like that? <clears throat> do we need the, to rig the character, or do we just need to add the brain? Good question. <clears throat> So we're looking at uh, a couple of solutions here. Um, uh, we have uh, different movement properties. One is called a grounded creature. Now, one thing that we want to support is if you import an object that has that is like mechanum compatible. Um, so it, it has a rig of a certain type with a certain naming convention and stuff like that. There's lots and lots of uh, rigs out there like that. Um, we'll detect it, and any animations that come along with it uh, will will uh, be added. It will also, if it's a mech anim, we'll also have a built-in suite of animations for that char for characters that you can uh, that you can use by default. So like. You know, a, a standard avatar, uh, that sort of thing that you bring in to just be able to work. Um, as far as other other objects, we have this like sort of squash and stretch, where that will, will would be available to you should you want to use it, um, and will automatically play. You know, like when you move forward, it will play the move forward animation, etc. When you attack, it will play the attack animation. So all those things will be automatically there for you. We also have, we will also have a way of having a library of like, these are the common animation commands that if you have a custom uh, rig, say like a bat, you know, with uh, six legs or something like that, all your animations that you made for it are unique. Um, all the animations that you import and bring in, you'll be able to hook up to like our naming convention and say, okay, play this when moving forward or when walking or flying, if it's a flying creature, right? There would be a separate flying creature property, but um, for an attack or something, use this for the attack, use this for the death animation, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. those would also be available for you to hook up. So I hope that answered that question. But the idea is that we want it to be so simple that if you just come with like, if you've just made some model and you're not an animator, you can have it like squash and stretch and just kind of like play some animation. Um, if it has components, you could use Mona Brains to like animate them with those movements. Um, it wouldn't be like the ideal way to animate, but you could do that. Um, uh, but we want to make it as, as easy as possible that if you just get like a character that's like mechanum compatible uh, from the web and you bring it in, it will automatically just work. Yeah, this is uh, this is super alpha news, Christian. Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Let close. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Boop, 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 boop. Pretty janky movement here. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So the other thing is, is like, so let's say you have uh, no, it didn't work. Is, okay. Uh, so let's check just here. talking about rigging and and putting brains on on different things. 
the idea is that the brains are portable so that like let's say you have um let's say you have this bat animation or a bat brain that you really like that somebody else has created and you've uh, purchased it or uh, created it or what what have you you somehow you you've got the the bat brain that you like it's going to call it may call certain animations uh, mm -hmm. in the brain itself um, and if those are using our standard template of names which you can just like link up <clears throat> then if you have your own object that you've created that you want to behave like a bat and maybe it's like uh, maybe it's like a microwave oven with um, like magnets on the side with like kids drawings or something that are the wings like <clears throat> the idea is that if you don't have any animations at all if you use the squash and stretch flying creature those animations that are called from the other brain will automatically just work on the squash and stretch so it's not going to like flap like you probably imagine it to but it will still feel alive um so uh mm. hopefully that that makes sense mm -hmm. Oh, I'm trying. Looks like I got some bugs to work out. Okay. Well, I'll show you my brain, oh, okay. my my thought process, and hopefully I'll be able to get the the bug uh, sorted. Okay. Let me let me just uh, go over this other question from Chris. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh. Focusing on optimization, what are some advice we can give builders to keep in mind to future proof creations for owner brains? So yeah, so one of the things that um, we want to focus on uh, this session too, and how are we doing on time? We're doing that fairly well on time. Yeah, we're doing good. Um, <clears throat> that's not a trigger. <laughs> is how to how to make things, how to make your models right now um, <clears throat> compatible for interactions so one of the things that you want to think about is like what is this thing going to be used for so if it's a door for instance and it's like a standard door for an apartment building or what have you it needs to swing on a hinge so it's really important where you place your your origin of uh your your uh for your model so the root uh, origin for where its axis of rotation is very is going to be very important for how it moves in the world. Um, if you have that axis of rotation at the center of the door, then if you were to use Mona brains to rotate it, it will spin around the center, right? So you won't really get get uh, the kind of door behavior that you want. But if you have it at the side where you would typically imagine a hinge to be then you know it will rotate around that axis and feel like it's 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 moving properly and so <clears throat> um in our last few sessions we really wanted to uh talk a little bit about like multi-use objects how to how to use the same object in many different ways in many different environments to like make it more useful yeah. and approaching object creation and origin placement with that in mind is also super helpful <clears throat> um because like for instance like let's say you have a sliding window um that origin could be right at the center right and so if it's just sliding back and forth and you want that interactivity um you know that's okay you're just moving it from left to right you saw some of the, those tiles move left, move right, done. However, if you wanted to make it more useful, you might actually stick it on the side like it's a hinge because you can still move it from left to right, but then now it can also open kind of like a door. And so um, thinking about where those object, where those origin placements are may, uh, is, is very important. The other thing is for yeah. scaling. So let's say you have like something like a little robot that you 
like maybe it's like kind of a one wheeled robot sort of deal where it doesn't have any arms it um so it might be a a good candidate for just using mona mona brains for just moving around an environment and maybe you have the the squash and stretch animations applied to it a little bit so it feels a little bit more alive um you probably are going to want to have the origin at the base of that character uh, because that will allow it to move <clears throat> and pivot around like if the, the one wheel is on the ground we'll be able to pivot along that ground so when it starts to move forward you can like tilt it backward a little bit and uh, that way you can get some more like natural movement from it as it's moving around that space so these are th things to think about when uh, creating for interactivity. The other thing is like... To illustrate what you're yeah, saying, that, Alejandro, is that right here, Yeah. if I put the pivot at the bottom center of the object, now when I size it, it's going to size from that, which makes it yeah. much more... It keeps it grounded while it's uh, animating its um, scale. So that's how the animation works. Say that again. Yeah. yeah, no, that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is like, if you're thinking about uh, like multi component objects, you will want to break those up. So for instance, in, in um, this particular uh, set of uh, objects I made for the dungeon uh, template, I made a treasure chest. Uh, we showed that in the, the first session. And that needs to, to remain two objects so that it can be opened up. Um, what, what is even better is to make the top of the treasure chest a sub-object of the primary treasure chest. And that top part of the treasure chest that opens up, making sure that the uh, origin of rotation is set where the hinge well, should be. Let me so pull that up, up for properly, you. Right. Where is it? What's it called? Chest. So, there we go. Yeah. So and right here. Treasure chest. Mm -hmm. Right. So that way. Oops. <laughs> when you open it up. Oh, there we yeah. go. Doop. Right. So now you have. Well, let's add a brain a to open this. Object. <clears throat> Now you have a base object that you can have animate uh, or you know uh, be interactive. So the, the base meaning the entire thing, the root of that object, and you have that subcomponent, the the chest lid that can be animated individually with like a Mona brain that calls it for rotation, right? So. That makes it a lot more useful being a rooted object because then you only, if you need to move it around the mm. space or whatever, you just need to move the parent. Um, if you made it two separate objects, you could still do that. And the, the player could, you know, make one a child of the other, but you know, uh, if you cut out that step, they don't need to do that. I was just going to make this thing open here. Uh, let's look at what it's, which way it's facing. So we're going to want to spin it up. <coughs> Excuse me. The X, <coughs> X axis. axis. So we're going to want to spin mm. it up, I think. And let's do it 60 degrees. Start open. And then let's add a brain to this runner. And open chest. Okay, set that to zero. All right, and then see what happens. Yeah, I did this right. There oh, we go. Uh... Oh, look. And you notice, like, that was just, like, three or, like, two minutes to put that brain together. Uh, 
vehicle mechanics, yes. Yeah. Right. Right now, we're focusing on more arcadey movement, arcade-like movement. So it's not really realistic vehicle simulations, but Alejandro assures me that is on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. So so we'll have things like wheel support, uh, but you'll also be able to do like um, uh, use physics forces for doing things like um, jets and rockets and things like that. Um, or you can go the more arcadey route and just use some of the tiles that are exposed now and and uh, um, yeah, you say like uh, you know forward moves the the thing forward, left uh, turns the thing left. Um, uh, so we, that that's already in, but yeah, we'll have vehicle support for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm doing something here where I'm opening, I'm getting the doors to open and close. And when they get an open message, they're going to move. And when they get a closed message, they're going to move back. But the problem I was having is that if you get an open message more than once, then it would just move it to the right more than once. Um, and so what oh, I'm doing. That's do why you need a, the state machine. Well, OK. I was just using variables, but we could show the state machine. Why don't, why, don't you, why don't you walk so us through easier. it here? All right, show me. Walk me through it, Alejandro. All right. All right, so state pages are uh, for changing states. Uh, states is like, um, I'm sitting down, I'm not sitting down. When I'm sitting down, I might not be able to move my character around, right? I may only be able to get up. So I want like the controls to move my character to be turned off, um, and just like the controls to either emote or or get up to be available. So <clears throat> states are ways to control just that specific uh, uh, types of states that an object can be in. So for instance, this door, it will probably want to start off in a closed state. The first state that you define is the state that um, is run at the start. You can rearrange these. But um, so we want to start on the closed state. On the closed state, if we have a, a message that says open, we want to move the, move the door open and then change state to the open state. Um, that right. way, that open message can't fire again. And then on the open state, we want the message closed or what have you, whatever you're, you, you set it up. It moves the door back in place and then changes back to the, clo or the closed state. OK. So let me see if I got this right here. Um, change state, open. So I'm doing a, mm -hmm. a select conditional tile. So that's when you click on something. Uh, when you click on the object. And so here, uh, select, move left. Uh, let's do a distance of two. Over a second, okay. Meters, okay. And then change the state to open. And then mm -hmm. open. Let's do select. Oops. Select. Move right one. And change the state to close. All right. Well, let's try that. I'm going to click on a door. Oh. oh, goodness. That opened when I clicked on it. it opened oh, so much now. You can't so now it's it. hiding. All oh, right. Yeah. Let me oh, let me open it just a little bit then. So, so don't you want to do like a 1.5. All right. 
We're just iterating here in real time, Alejandro. All right. Sure. You know? Sure. Oh, man, that's still too far. Goodness. Well, it, it's it's about a meter. Yeah, like it's a, just a, that. Oh, just you know. If you look at the squares. Yep, you're right. On the bottom, those squares are a meter. That's true. Maybe I should just do 0.8. It just do, yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, there. there you go. Uh-oh. I know why that is. This is something I'm going to need to change. Um, all right. Bug. File it as a bug. Okay. Bug. Bug. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the... Uh, but that states, right? So close state, select, move to open. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay. Let's so, see. so, but ideally here, what you would want to do is use those messages, right? Because you'd only want to do that when you're close. Exactly. And, and you're holding a key. A key. Right? Yeah. That is the goal. All right. Let's see. Movement. Move left. It's this one. We're going to change that to move right. All right. So yeah, I just copied previous door, pasted it. Let me go back here, change our brain to this new one that I created. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea here with this method is um, just holding a variable telling me if it's open or not. And if it's opened, then um, if it's uh, opened when I receive a closed message, well, then you can close it. But if it's not open when I receive a closed message, it's not going to do anything. And he, likewise, if I receive an open message and it's not opened, then we're going to do it. But if it's already opened, we're going to skip it. Gotcha. All right. And then I have this brain here, the player brain. That's saying, if I'm near a door, because I've tagged these as doors. We haven't talked about tags yet, but tags mm -hmm. are pretty powerful. Um, Super powerful. So I added uh, a tag to these doors called door. So now, when the player is near the door, it's going to send an open message. And when it's far from the door, it's going to send a closed message. Um, so what was happening before is that far was firing because the player was far from the door and then it was closing twice. So hopefully this will prevent it from closing twice. But don't you want to have it so that, okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. When you're near and have a key? Oh yes, but first I'm testing this okay. part. See if I can get it to go. <laughs> Dang it! All right, let's get that door. Let's get that right door fixed. It moved the wrong way when it opened. Uh, let's see. Let's try moving left. Moving right. All right, let's try that. All right, we're coming up top of the hour here. Um, we would love to hear what you think so far, just being able to say, all right, yes, I opened the door. Now I'm, <laughs> now the closing. I got to fix my movement. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, got some bugs here. Still some bugs to iron out. Yeah, I'm going to set the pin, set the pin. I'm going to be changing this. So let's see, that was right. You don't have to worry Second about line. Pins here. Alejandro has already filed the bug. Get rid of pins. Get, Get rid, rid of pins. them. Get rid of them. All right. Let's see. Move, 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 move. Open. Close. Yes. Open. Close. That's so exciting. Okay, so now we got to make it locked unless you have a key. Let's see if we can do that before the top of the hour. 
Um, open close. All right, so now I need to go back to my player. Oops, oh, which is the vehicle. All right. So right now, when you're near the door, um, door distance of two, well, I want to add one more condition that the value of key is equal to one. Let's see if that works. And if it doesn't, I got another bug to fix. All right, let's see. Oh, it's not opening. All right, let's go get our key. Ooh, whoa. That key really made me spin around. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What is happening? There we go. You open? Yes, the key opened it. It opens. Yes. Let's try again. Yes. <laughs> All right. We'll go into this. Uh oh. Now what? You can't even you see it anymore. I won. I won the game. You won. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even get to see what's inside. That's the next glorious adventure. Little, little peek. Oh, what? Look what? at this. Like a treasure slash puzzle room. Yes, it is. So I'm working what? on my... Moving platforms maybe in the future there? In the future, moving platforms. But, you know, you have to solve the puzzle first to be able to get those platforms to move. Otherwise, yeah. you get stuck in the trap. Oh, no. And once you're in the trap, uh-oh, you're going to have to figure out how to get back out. So... All of these things are coming very soon, hopefully by the end of the day, because it's fast. All right, that's what we got for you. Thank you, Christian. Anybody else have any questions? Love to answer questions. Yeah. Thoughts, comments. Why we don't get or anything uh, I'm happy to stay in for a few more minutes too mm -hmm. don't be shy if you also want to share your progress or talk about the kind of things that you would want to see in Mono Brains um, the kind of features you'd like to see added technical if you have like any technical questions or, or help that, that might be needed in, in setting up your objects you can talk to mm-hmm Definitely. And, you know, something with Motor Brains yeah. that we're <clears throat> planning on doing is attaching them to objects. So eventually you'll be able to have interactive objects in your galleries, and those will be able to backfill some old galleries. So the ability to bring in an interactive object into a space will be a really powerful addition, in, in my opinion. Can you modify the brain code? Absolutely. Um, oh, no. So, are you oh, are you talking about are you talking about making your own uh, tiles specifically, or are you talking about um, or or modifying the code that we have written, or are you talking about the the brains themselves, like the instructions, like if if uh, somebody if you've gotten a brain from somewhere else. Um, from that second point, yes. Um, we may we may implement some some means of locking them if if somebody does not want them edited for some reason, which there could be cases for that. Um, however, uh, when it comes to we do want to provide people with the ability to create new tiles themselves. Um, 
so we're looking at uh, doing that with um, allowing people to create new pile functionality through visual scripting uh, if they wish to. Um, but as far as uh, modifying the base functionality, uh, uh, probably not. Um, I think long term, we would like to have a vibrant developer community. And so um, what we would need to do is work with you to create custom C sharp tiles and make sure that those get shipped inside of Mona. And so like if that is something that's interesting to you, we would love to talk to you because ultimately it'd be really great yeah. to have um, an ecosystem for that. What Alejandro mentioned is that we do already have the ability. I'll share. Oh, well, let's see. I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, oh, you probably can't see. Hold on. I'm going to share my whole window here, including <laughs> OBS. Um, but you'll notice here we have two visual scripting tiles um, that allow you to listen for events for MonoBrains and build your own visual script. Um, so we are thinking about extensibility. Um, and this would essentially allow you to make your own tile in visual scripting. Um, and then long term, we're looking at like what other scripting languages like Lua, JavaScript, or C Sharp that we might be able to to provide. But ultimately, we want this to be extensible and um, you know owned by the community. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Rico? Yeah. Hopefully. Um, yeah, um, hey, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, uh, Joe, um, yeah, anytime you want to chat with us, just feel free to reach out, uh, and we can, we can talk about how Mona Brains can, can, uh, build out your vision as well. Um, not in, yet, but soon, soon, like within the next two weeks soon, um, because we are doing a, a hackathon and then after that it will be available, um, as kind of a private beta. Yeah, I'm excited for. To, to get people uh, building with brains here really soon. It would be really exciting to see what people build, but also it would be great to get feedback on things that could be improved, uh, yeah. made more clear, or uh, functionality that you feel is missing. When we when we release Motor Brains, our, our first primary beta release will not be all the functionality that we uh, wish to have. It will be uh, kind of a focused core of functionality to get a good amount of things that you probably, that many people will probably want to do um, in their spaces. Um, but it won't, won't, it certainly won't be everything. Um, but uh, yeah, any ideas for functionality or needs or um, how to improve things, make, specifically also how to make things easier. Um, would be very welcome. Awesome. All right, awesome. very good. Christian. Well, we're five minutes past. Uh, hit us up in Discord if you have any questions. And thank yeah. you for hanging out with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.